And he tells them, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots when you look back. And so he gives an example from his own life of what he means by that. He says, the first dot was when he was born. He was born to a young college graduate student who decided to give him up for adoption. So this young mom had Steve Jobs, decided she really could not raise him, and wanted to give him up for ado adoption. Now she's a, a young college graduate, and one of the things she insisted on is that whoever adopts my boy will have to provide him a college education. And so a lawyer and his wife had been, uh, were lined up now to adopt the, the young boy. But at the last minute, this lawyer changed his mind and said, we really want a baby girl, not a baby boy. And so now, Steve Jobs' adoptive parents, the ones who eventually wound up adopting him, got a phone call in the middle of the night, or, or whenever it was, and said, we have a little boy here. Do you want to adopt him? And they said, sure. But the mother, the biological mother, found out that these parents, the, mo the mother had never graduated college, and the father had never even graduated high school. And so she did not, at first, allow them to adopt the baby boy. But then the parents promised they would send the young boy to college. And so, so they adopted the young boy. Well, 19 years later or so, Steve Jobs is sent to college. And he chooses one of the most expensive colleges uh, there, there, there was. And after he's there for a semester or two, running through his parents' life savings, working class family, life savings to send him to college, Steve Jobs decides this is not worth it. I am spending all this money that my parents have sp spent their lives saving. I don't see the value of this. And so Steve Jobs, dot number two, drops out of college. And he decides, instead of g g pursuing for years and years this degree, spending all this money, I'm just going to take a few classes that I actually enjoy. And so he did. He took a class at the college on calligraphy, how to write things very well. He said this, this, they, they were the, probably the foremost state-of-the-art calligraphers at this college in, in the United States and the world. Well, that was dot number two. Poor college student living with his friends in the, in the room, taking classes, collecting Coke bottles, five cents each, to return for deposits so he can get a little bit of money to eat, going every Sunday to Hare Krishna's temple so he could get a free meal. That's how he spent the next part of his life, and learning calligraphy. Well, 10 years later, he produced the Macintosh. The Macintosh computer with the first computer with beautiful text. If you remember computers back then, the green screens, I mean, the ugliest things you could imagine. And Steve Jobs, because now of his calligraphy training, produced one of the most beautiful computers that existed up to that time. And Steve Jobs is very uh, anxious to point out that because Microsoft just copies what Apple does, we now have beautiful calligraphy type, uh, type on our Microsoft computers because of what Steve Jobs did back then. So Steve Jobs, he looks back and he says, you could not have connected these dots looking forward. But looking back, you can see how because his mother gave him up for adoption, 
because he was adopted by poor parents who really couldn't afford to, to send him and, and spend for all the college monies. Because he dropped out of college because of these financial pressures and decided to take something that just interested him, we got the Apple computer and we got computing as it is today. You can't connect the dots looking forward, but looking back you can see, wow, things worked out. That's the, the promise that God gives us. Things will work out. You can't see how it may be, how it might work out looking forward. Things are a mess. How is this going to turn out into good? We can't see that looking forward, but looking backwards we'll be able to say, yes, it worked out. I'd like to conclude with the Matthew version of the builders. And this we find in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. The same parable of the two builders, but Matthew's version of it. Matthew 7, verse 24, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings, because he taught as one who had authority, and not as the teachers of the law. Jesus does have authority. He is the one who from the future, who knowing the beginning from the end, is able to say, this you need to know. This is what you need to do. And if you do this, you will be like a well-planted tree.